Wolfgang Conquer, Ben. After our biggest win ever in Florida, we hop on a three hour flight west to Austin, Texas, home of delicious barbecue, the Texas Longhorns, and of course the Lodge Card Club. It doesn't take long for us to make our way over there. We're into the 1-3 game for $2,000. I had to share this with you guys, something a first for me. I'm used to the pictures and autographs, and what I'm not used to are ranchers in Texas naming bull calves after me. Wolfgang the Poker Monster, shout out to you, Randy. Super cool that you named a bull calf after me, and he looks pretty cute. Not really uh, too stoked about where he's gonna end up, but uh, we have a calf out there named Wolfgang. How sick is that? This video is a fun double vlog consisting of the session immediately after our flight, and then the coveted Brad Owen and Andrew Nimi meetup game the next day. If you guys are new here, hit that subscribe button. Let's make a push towards 50,000 subscribers. A lot of fun videos on the way. I'm currently in the present moment in St. Martin with your boy Ethan Rampage Poker. So hit the subscribe button and follow me on Instagram if you want to see how my trip goes there. Let's get right into the hands. First hand of the night, we look down at King Queen Offsuit. It's around 10 p.m. I'm in the low jack and I pop it up to $20. A fellow poker vlogger by the name of Branson puts in the call from the big blind we're going heads up to a flop. If I was looking for a good flop, King 8-3 with two clubs would definitely be it. He checks it over to me, and I confidently toss in one green chip. That's 25 bucks, and Branson finds a call. We're heads up to the turn. With 91 out there, the turn pairs the board. It comes with three of spades. He checks it over to me for a second time. I don't really think I'm going to get three streets of value against him. If he has a hand that doesn't contain a king in it, so I decide to check behind, looking for no club on the river, and then I'll go for one more street of value. That's exactly what happens. The six of diamonds seems harmless. He checks it over to me and now let's stick with the plan. I check the turn to bet on the river to get my second street. $75 is the price of poker. It might look a little bit bluffy as well. He puts in the call. I turn over my pair of kings and we're 1-0 against the fellow poker vlogger here, taking down the $241 pot. Moving on to the next one, we look down at ace queen of spades from the low jack. I raise it up to $35 over a $10 straddle. And now the hijack three bets me to $145. Actions back over to me. Me. I've ace queen suited, but I'm gonna be out of position. Not exactly the best spot, but I didn't come to the lodge to fold ace queen suited, so I put in the additional monies and we're off to the flop. Flop's not great, it comes 974 with two diamonds. I check in flow over to the hijack. He makes a standard T bet for 175, and uh, nothing exciting to report here. I muck my cards, we're stuck 245 early. I switch tables, then look down at the same hand ace queen of spades, and I raise it up to $30 now over a $10 straddle. We only get one call this time, we're going heads up to the flop. With $74 out there, the flop comes king 9-6 with two spades. We have an over card and a front door flush draw. Life's pretty good. I go for a half pot C bet of $30. The cutoff's a non-believer. He puts in $30 and we're off to the turn. I'm looking for an ace or a spade. Can the dealer give us what we want? Yes, the three of spades peels off on the turn. Bang, we turn the flush. $134 out there. And now instead of going for the bet, I go for a tricky check. Why? I think the cutoff would bet here with any king when I check to him on the turn. And then I can go for the check raise and look to get his entire stack in. But unfortunately, he decides to check behind. We're looking for a non-board pairing river, which is exactly what comes the ace of diamonds. I played this hand pretty strange, so I'm gonna stick with it and go for another check. Hopefully he'll go for a bet and now I can check raise him all in. Fortunately for us this time, he does not check behind he bets out for a hundred dollars looks like he's trying to take down the pot but oh well we got to stick our stack in here with the nuts i rip it all in for 450 dollars he thinks about it for a little while thinks i might be bluffing but then ultimately mucks his cards we're going to take down that 234 dollars pot before we get back into the hands i wanted to let you guys know about the sponsor for this video 5cbd i know i'm not the only one who gets anxious before playing poker or when i get into big hands and big spots on the table so it's nice to have a product to help take Take some of the edge off. 5CBD reached out and sent over some sour gummies and some mint chocolate tincture to help me get on the right track. I've taken them before sessions and I've noticed a huge difference and as a poker player I know you guys can relate with me that we have the worst schedules in terms of sleeping so I've taken them before bed and I've honestly had some of the best night of sleep that I've had in years. They're made in the USA, they're plant-based, vegan, and they're all natural and I love supporting companies like that and I love companies even more that are going to hook you guys up with free products and that's exactly exactly what I got them to do. I'm going to pin a comment down below that has my unique link in it and what that link will get you is a bunch of free products. You only have to pay for shipping so it's
it's totally risk-free for you, and I know you're gonna love it. They have a bunch of products to choose from and a lot of cool flavors like the sour gummies and the mint chocolate. So definitely go click that link down below in the comments, and I hope you guys enjoy the products as much as I do. Big shout out to 5CBD for sponsoring this video. And now, as always, let's jump right back into the hands. This guy, this guy doesn't want to be filmed, so we're filming him. No, no you're gonna uh, edit out my face. Yeah. It's gonna be a baby emoji. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like a sexy, like the devil, angry devil emoji. Like a sexy kimono dragon. Yeah, hell yeah. 1950, now in our stack, I look down at King Jack of Clubs from the small blind. Under the gun raises it up to $15. I put in the three bet to $50. And the under the gun does not put in the call. He also does not fold. He puts in the four bet to $150. Interesting spot for sure. I have king jack of clubs. I decide in this moment to put in the call. And we're going to go heads up to the flop. I'm looking for an above average one, which does not come. 5-4 deuce with two hearts. I start with a check. I'd be doing this with all my over pairs as well. So nothing too out of the ordinary just yet, and he fires out for $200. I gotta show you the good hands, I gotta show you the bad ones. I find a fold in this one, and we're gonna lose that hand. There's a live stream going on concurrently, and Ethan gets called over to there, so we go over and support him, but then we go back to our measly 1-3 game. We look down to 1700 in our stack at Queen Jack Offsuit from the low jack. I open the pot up to $20. Middle position, 3 bets us to 60, and I put in the call. Pretty standard so far, we're heads up to a flop, which gives us top pair, Queen 7-3, Rainbow, I start with a check. The opponent fires out for $175 into the $124 pot. Definitely a strange overbet here on the flop, but expect him to go for a more standard 30 to 50% pot size bet. But I can't fold top pair here, even though I'm not really loving life already. I put in the call and we see the king of spades on the turn. I'm never betting into him. I check. 470 out there. Is he going to go for another overbet? No, he goes for $400 this time into 474. Actions back over to me. Is my queen jack offsuit here good? I don't really think so. He's betting a large amount, telling an interesting story, although the king of spades on the turn eliminates a lot of pocket kings from his range. I still muck my cards here. I'm not trying to play a massive pot here where I have no idea where I stand in the hand. I muck my cards and let's move on to the next one. We look down at ace jack offsuit now. I'm in the cutoff and the low jack opens it up to 30. The hijack calls, I call, and the button calls. We're going four ways to the flop. With 120 out there, the flop comes queen 10-7 with two hearts. Unfortunately, the red ace in our hand is not a heart, but the action checks around on the flop and that brings in the turn card. Turns a big blank, it comes a deuce of clubs. And when the action checks to me, it seems like nobody's interested in this pot just yet. We're going to go for a $65 bet here. If we get called, it's unlikely they have any strong queen in their hand. Maybe some flush or straight draws so we can bomb the river and probably take this pot down uncontested. Unfortunately though, we get called in two spots, the button and the low jack. We're going three ways to the river. Looking for a clean river and I think that's what comes the seven of clubs. When the low jack checks it over to me for a third time, we need to stick to our plan. There's no heart and the seven of clubs didn't improve any straight draws so I go for a $205 bet into the two opponents hoping it takes it down but now the button doesn't call he re-raises to 525 and the low jack gets out of the way how does he have a hand that can go for a raise here on the river after just calling the turn on a very draw heavy board doesn't really make too much sense but I do just have ace high so unfortunately I have to let my cards go and now we're stuck $810 on this session. Wrapping up the first session of this vlog here, I look down at pocket queens from the hijack and I open it up to $20. The cutoff three bets me to 70 and the action's back over to me. I'm stuck in this session and have a strong hand. I need to go for the four bet. I make it $205, expecting him to call with a lot of his hands, but uh, apparently not this one. He mucks his cards and uh, that's gonna finish up this session here. We're taking down the last part of the night with pocket queens and we put in the four bet. In for 2K, out for 12.84, a net loss of 760. 16. Those are my three biggest hands played on this session, uh, but this is where the video gets good. Let's go on to the Brad Owen and Andrew Neamey meetup game. All right, welcome okay, with the massive payout here. We got five, we got six, we got 11, we got 1184. Congratulations, Wolfgang. Okay. <laughs> I needled, I get needled on the way out. We wake up the next morning to Ethan already vlogging. It's like seven in the morning. He's a menace. We then head over to the lodge where I actually get spotted first by a vlog watcher before Ethan or Karan. Pretty sick. What's up? Right here. Hi. What's up, man? 
What's up? What's up, bro? What's up, you guys? We're here at the Brad Owen meetup game. He's back here. You can see him back here in the corner. But Brad Owen, Andrew Nimi, Doug Polk, I got Rampage, Karan, Marcelo, all the buddies are out here. I already have met a bunch of guys. It's super cool. We're going to try to run it up. We're in for $1,000. It's a $300 to a $1,000 buy-in. Hopefully, we can get in the live stream later today. It's a tag team thing. But as of right now, we're doing pretty good. We're going to jump right into the hands. Let's go. And jump into the hands we did. We're immediately in there for $1,000. The blinds are 2-5. First hand from this meetup, I look down at King Jack of Diamonds from the small blind. The straddle's on. Under the gun raises it up to $30. Action folds back around to me. I put in the call, and the big blind does as well. We're going four ways to the flop. Flop come ace a7 with two diamonds. Pretty interesting spot. We have the best flush draw available with a king high, but the action ends up getting checked around. We're off to the turn, which gives us a gutter to the straight. It comes a 10 of spades. Action's on me. I start with a check again on the paired board, and the big blind checks as well. Action's on onto the gun. He decides to check behind, and that gives us a pair. The jack of hearts on the river. I check again, looking to pick off any bluffs. When I check, the big blind bets out for $76. Onto the gun folds, and I end up putting in the call. I'm not going to be bluffed here. I have some showdown value. I stick in the 76 bucks. The opponent turns over eight deuce offsuit. Yes, eight deuce, not ace deuce. And uh, we're going to take down that pot there. Nice call from me on the river. We're up on the session and we look down at pocket eight, the Ochos with 1100 in our stack. I'm on the button. The under the gun straddles. The hijack raises it up to $30 and I put in the call. The big blind does as well and so does the straddle. We're off to the flop. With $122 out there, the flop comes about as good as it can get. Ace, eight, three, bang! We flop middle set. Additionally, there's two diamonds on board, a lot of draws, and some aces to connect with the opponent's ranges. So when the action checks over to me, I bet out for $40. Probably could be sizing up somewhere around $75, targeting any diamond draws or aces in the ranges of our opponents. $40 is going to get us looked up by the hijack and the big blind. We're off three ways to the turn. Looking for a clean turn card, but that's not what comes. The queen of diamonds is very unfortunate. If anyone has an ace, it's definitely an action killer. And any two diamonds now has us beat, and we're going to need to pair the board. The action checks over to me for a second time probably should be going for a bet here and then either bet calling or bet folding i decided to check behind looking to see what the river card brings in which isn't a board pairing card but it's not another diamond that's pretty good and the big blind now leads out for 125 dollars when the hijack gets out of the way nothing for me to do other than call if i'm raising here i'm only going to get called by better like pocket queens aces or some diamond draws so i toss in the 125 if he has a diamond draw we're going to have to pay it off but that's not what he has he turns over two pair for ace queen unfortunately it was a queen of diamonds on the turn otherwise we might have got stacks in here but i'm going to take down that 492 dollar pot we're playing pretty good here at this media game so good in fact that we're signing autographs from fans of the vlog shout out to you man you're super cool and uh happy to sign any autographs or take any pictures for any of you guys out there that meet me in the future what do you think of this lex what's up guys wolfgang coker bang <laughs> We then move over to a new 510 game and add on for a thousand dollars more. I look down at Ace King of Hearts here with sixteen hundred dollars in my stack. I'm in the big blind and the under the gun raises it up to thirty five dollars. Player in the plus one position puts in the call. The button calls as well and now I re raise to hundred and sixty five dollars, putting in the three bet. The player in the plus one position who called the thirty five dollars now goes for the call four bet all the way up to six hundred dollars. Action folds back around to me. I'm sticking my entire stack here in with ace king suited his line is very strange he's trying to represent a hands like kings or aces although i have both of those cards in my hand some removal some blockers here whatever you want to call it i rip it all in and he puts in the call not looking too excited i don't know why he's not too excited he turns over pocket kings we agree to run it twice let's see if we can get lucky here with 32.50 in the pot, the first board comes queen, five, deuce with one heart. We're going to need a heart or an ace on the turn. We get the five of hearts, which gives us a ton more outs. What does the river come? The ace of clubs. Bang, we rivered the first pot. Second board comes queen high again with one heart. We pick up the deuce of diamonds on the turn, which is no good. We're going to need an ace or a jack on the river, which does not come. It pairs the queen. So we're going to chop up that $3,200 pot. Pretty eventful so far in the 510 game. We look down at Ace King of Hearts. We also have to balance our range with some hands like 5 4 suited of the diamond variety. I'm in the hijack and I open it up to $55. The button now 3 bets me to $175. Action folds back around to me. I'm going to defend this here. We're playing pretty deep. I put in the call. The 365 in the pot. We're flopping good hands every day of the year. The flop comes Queen 9 Deuce. Bang! 
and we flopped the diamond flush. Five high at that, but flopping a flush here in a four bet pot is pretty amazing. I check it over to the button. He bets out for $150. Do I go for the call here and risk another diamond or a board pairing card coming on the turn without charging him the maximum? I don't think so. I'm going to go for the check raise here with my very vulnerable flush. I raise it up to $425. Probably should have made it $420 for uh, comedic relief here, but uh, he doesn't find anything funny in this hand. He mucks his cards. It's unfortunate he didn't have any king of diamonds or ace of diamonds in his hand. Maybe pocket king maybe ace queen king queen so many possibilities here for him to call a raise but we're going to take down that $515 pot and we look down at the next hand, $1,800 in our stack at the ladies pocket queens from middle position, one limp and I raise it up to $50. Only the limper puts in the call, we're going heads up to the flop. With $115 out there, the flop gives us an overpair and some backdoor draws. It comes jack 10 5 with two hearts. Middle position checks it over to me in flow. Probably should be going for an automatic C bet here, but I check behind for a little bit of deception in the board pairs with a 10 of clubs peeling off on the turn. And now I see why I checked it back on the flop. We were going to get his stack in no matter what. He only has $65 left in a 510 game. He puts it all in and I snap call him with three green chips. We're off to a river, which comes the ace of hearts. Not exactly the best card, but I turn over my pocket queens and uh, he mucks his hand. $245 coming my way. When it's all said and done, we rack up our chips and head to the cage. What's up, you guys? We are wrapping up this 2-5 meetup game. Brad Owen, Andrew Nimi, Doug Polk, and of course, all of our buddies that we traveled out here with. Got into the game for a thousand, then switch over to the 510, topped up for another grand, in for 2k, out for 1855, and a loss of 145. But the memories are priceless, and I hope you guys enjoyed the action here from the lodge. Some of the scenes, definitely cool meeting all of the other vloggers. If you guys like this video, be sure to leave a comment down below. Leave a like. Good luck on the felt next time you play, as always. Come up and say hi if you see me in your local card room. Good luck on the felt, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching to the end of my video. Click my head below to subscribe and stay in the loop. See you next time.